I obtained this large billet of zebra wood here for almost nothing because of the large split that you see on the right side of it. But there's plenty of great, well quartered and blemish free and split free wood on here that I can use, especially for something as small as a fretboard. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for guitar number 57. As you've seen earlier, I'm also making the neck out of zebra wood. So there will be a pretty intense wraparound effect of the zebra wood grain around the neck and the fretboard. So the first thing I'm doing here is just finding the best part of the billet that I really like and I'm tracing out my fretboard template. Now I'm cutting off that split section of the board just because that part of the board is going to make it difficult to get the billet square and flat. So I'll just get rid of that piece and I'm taking the board to the jointer, truing up one face and then squaring up one edge. And with one face flat and one edge square, I can then take it to the planer and flatten the other face, giving me a nice well-dimensioned blank, which I can then take to the bandsaw and resaw my fretboard blanks. I do this by following a straight line that I've scored on the top edge. I'm not using a fence here because with the fence, you would just end up getting a lot of bandsaw drift, unless you had a resaw bar on that fence, but even then, it just seems unnecessary when you can just follow a straight line that you've drawn onto the edge of the blank. Now I go back to the planer to bring this fretboard blank down to its final dimension. Well, not final dimension, but to uh, the dimension I need for it now. It's starting dimension, really, which is 0.27 inch. Now through the process of the build, it's going to get dimensioned and thickness further down. Um, especially when I get to radius sanding, I'm going to lose a lot of thickness then. But for now, 0.27 inch is just a good starting point. Okay, so now I have a fretboard blank and I need to decide which side I like better aesthetically. I don't like this thing right here, so I think this is going to be the show face. I mean, there's this right here, but that is easily going to be on the outside of where the taper of the fretboard will actually end up. So that'll just get cut off. So this is the show face. So I just write that on there as a big reminder that this side faces up. And now this board is ready to be slotted. I use a power slotting method. That is, I use my table saw with a special blade that has a very specific kerf that is specific to my fret tang. So I stick my template down. There's an index pin on this fence and I use that template and the index pin to cut the slots at predetermined locations. Okay, and there we have it. And now I'm cutting out the fretboard blank on my bandsaw staying just outside those lines that I just traced.
For the design on the end of the fretboard tongue, I have some tight scoops to follow. And this is a quarter inch blade, so it does okay with extreme radii, but I do have to be a little bit careful. I don't want to twist the blade as I cut. On any templated slotting system, the first cut is always for the nut slot. It's not for the first fret. So it's always necessary to cut off the excess fretboard at that first slot. This handsaw, by the way, has the same kerf as the table saw blade that I used to cut these slots. And now since the bandsaw only did a rough job of cutting out the shape and taper of the fretboard, I'm going to finalize the shape and taper by fixing a template to the board and removing the excess material outside the template. To avoid unnecessary tear out and to have the best chance of keeping all my fingers, I like to use the robo sander held in a drill press. The robo sander is simply a sanding sleeve with a flush trim bearing at the bottom. So it works very much like a flush trim router bit, but again, as I mentioned, without the tear out and the loss of fingers. Okay, so now we can see kind of what this zebra wood is going to look like. This is going to be a um, very sort of er experimental choice here. This zebra wood, by the way, is going to be complemented with a zebra wood neck. So really it'll appear, if, it, if I do it well, it'll appear like the fretboard is built right out of the neck rather than being two separate pieces. I think that'll just be kind of cool. Only certain woods can you get that effect on it. Um, a lot of other woods, when you glue them together, you, you would still be able to kind of see where the grain of one piece ends and it begins on the other piece. But with the zebra wood, I think it's going to really look seamless and cool. Now, I should mention that zebra wood is not necessarily an ideal fretboard wood. It's de definitely softer than ebony and rosewood and tr things you would traditionally use for a fretboard. But it's not super soft. It's not like mahogany soft. It's sort of a, a medium hardwood. And so I think it'll hold up just fine. The second issue is stability. And it seems to have fairly good stability as well. Again, it doesn't have gold standard stability like certain neck woods do like mahogany. But I've actually had the particular piece that I'm using here. Um, you saw it earlier. It was just a really large billet of zebra wood. I have had that in my shop for like five years and it didn't cup or twist or do anything like that at all. So just that anecdotal evidence there um, kind of made me excited about trying to use this as a neck and fretboard wood. Either way I'm taking a stab here with the zebra wood so hopefully it turns out really cool um, but either way I'll learn something in the process and that's what it's all about. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.